I welcome all of you to this presentation. As Sir said, we have three reports which your table is assembly produced. The first of these is the State Finances Audit Report, which is report number one for the year 2023. <coughs> this provides an overview of the state's finances. As you can see, for the column for the year 21-22, to which this year pertains, this, this report pertains. The state government was able to achieve all the targets adopted in the Odisha FRBM Act for the year 21-22. There was a high revenue surplus of 43,471 crores, which indicated that the state government's receipts were much higher than the state government's expenses for the year 21-22. Instead of a fiscal deficit, which is usually the case with most of the states in India, the state government achieved a fiscal surplus for the year 21-22. This indicated that the sum of receipts for the it's not 100% checks, but as I said, the risk is that the institutions, all of them may not be genuine and that requires a physical visit to the site to see whether it's a bona fide institution or not. That has to be done by the district welfare officer and the district education officer. Question is asking the court, we are only conducting the, we are only conducting. Again, coming to the inadequate coverage of beneficiaries, we noticed that the coverage of the SAST students was 30 to 42 percent on average per year lower than the numbers which were admitted to 11th class during the period 17 to 21. <coughs> it is highly unlikely that this entire missing percentage of 30 to 42 percent. Today in the assembly, uh, uh, there are three reports which have been uh, laid. So uh, we have a very brief uh, presentation. So I request you all. Please listen first our uh, presentation. Then you can ask if you, yeah. So thank you, thank you for the your uh, coming here. We have already so, provided you the press brief. Yeah, press brief. Press brief is already with you, and now uh, senior DAG will make presentation. If you have any ask, if you want to ask any questions, you may ask after that. Some points functions and functionaries as part of coverage of urban local bodies. So first we will go through the findings from the PMAY, Pradhan Mantri Awaj Yojana. So the first point is on exclusion of eligible beneficiaries who could have been uh, sanctioned houses under the Pradhan Mantri Awaj Yojana. We noticed that Gram Sabhas were supposed to identify eligible beneficiaries. Gram Sabhas had identified 27.45 lakh eligible beneficiaries across the state. Only 18.86 lakh of these eligible beneficiaries were finally formally included for coverage under the scheme. 8.59 lakh eligible beneficiaries who had been identified by the Gram Sabhas therefore got excluded from the scheme. No reasons were recorded for why such exclusion has taken place. Every time in a particular block, uh, the houses have to be sanctioned. There's a priority list, the sequence in which individuals will be sanctioned houses. That has to be maintained. That's called a priority list. We noticed that priority numbers and priority lists had not been maintained. And even if they had been maintained, they were completely violated while sanctioning the houses in all the four, in all the 24 test check blocks <coughs> that we covered under the audit. Now, when you don't adhere to the priority number, it can result in a lot of risk. People have to go and approach the person concerned and follow up on your own instead of it following an automated sequence. So this is a great risk. Issue of fraudulent work orders. Work orders have been issued to individuals other than eligible beneficiaries. We noticed on tested basis when we verified the documents of the beneficiaries who have been given the houses, like voter ID card, Aadhaar, bank account numbers, they belong to people who are not the eligible beneficiaries. Inadequate coverage of two very disadvantaged groups, persons with disability and landless beneficiaries. There was a target number of 83,962 beneficiaries who had disabilities who have been identified for coverage and were to be sanctioned houses. Against that number, only 2133, that is 2.5% were actually sanctioned houses under the scheme. Against 57,932 landless beneficiaries were identified. They were first supposed to be provided with a piece of land and then they were supposed to be sanctioned a house. A total of 40,608, 70% could not be provided with houses because they had not yet been provided the land itself. These are at paras 2.1511 and 2.1512. Coming to the irregularities noticed in the actually constructed houses. 
we conduct a joint physical inspection across these 24 blocks in the state of 647 houses in all, house constructions in all. Out of 647, 57%, 370 were being used as intended as dwelling or residential purpose by the beneficiary. 277 have been reported incorrectly as completed even though they were not yet complete, which means that the money that had been sanctioned, it was doubtful as to what it was used for because the houses were still remaining incomplete. 